How are you? Hi, it's Anna Walker with Anna Walker Designs and StabThingsIntoExistence.com and today I'm giving you a little peek behind the curtain into what I've been working on, what's been on my table and I'm just calling it What the Felt. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera down and tell you a little bit about what's been going on in my work table and give you some ideas maybe of your own. Here we go. Oh, let's turn on a light so we can see a little bit better. Oh, that might be somewhat better. So what we have are a number of projects that I have on my table right now. Um, and some of them <clears throat> have been on my table for quite some time. Um, we'll talk about Uniquely Felt at the end of this, so I'm going to move it out of the way. Um, this is a sculpture of my pooch, Shotzi that I started years ago um, and it needs to be finished. And so I'm going to be working on putting the finishing touches on Shotzi, my 13 year old miniature dachshund. And I will be happy to uh, post pictures of her when I'm finished, but I thought I'd show you, you know, a little bit about um, sculpting and doing some fun things. So there's Shotzi. Now back here, I have a little something I've been working on for a friend of mine. She wanted not a rampant um, lion, she wanted a rampant pig. And she wants it to be a rampant flying pig. So I think I've figured out how to do the wings on this little old fella. And um, we have got him standing up with the assistance of a little felting needle back here on my work surface. But we have a felted pig, a flying rampant pig, and another sculpture that's been on my table for quite some time. Um, but I am looking to finishing this little fella up just about the same time that I finish up Shotzi. So um, a tiny little pig um, that will be going to my bestie Barb um, when I get him finished. And yes, she and I uh, frequently um, have things in mind for one another that take a rather long time sometimes to get um, delivered and finished. But you know what, we're best friends and we give each other grace and I'm grateful for that. So we have Shotzi and the Rampant Flying Pig that will be finished up pretty soon. I also have something that I have been working on. Now, I have mentioned before that it is possible for you to take a child's drawing and turn it into a felted sculpture. And this is my 3D rendering of this drawing that I found online. Whoops, let's get it up again. And I think it's looking pretty good. We're ready to um, skin this little fella <clears throat> here pretty soon. And I look forward to um, maybe doing a blog post on putting together, <coughs> pardon me, I had a tickle in my throat this morning, putting together a little step-by-step -step, um, mini tutorial for how to make this happen um, using basic shapes and then adding those basic shapes together. But our, we're calling it a narwhal. We think that's what this is. <clears throat> it's not really a whale. It's not a unicorn. We're calling it a narwhal. So um, that's on my table. Last night, as if I don't have enough things going on. I had some um, armatures put together with um, pipe cleaners from a tote that I usually take to in-person classes and I was cleaning it out and getting things back where they need to be. And I thought, you know what, I don't wanna toss, <clears throat> there's that tickle again. I don't wanna toss this armature out and I really don't want to hang on to it. So what are we gonna do with it? <coughs> oh my gosh, what a tickle. Let me take a drink. <clears throat> Hopefully that'll take care of that. Um, so I decided to just start stabbing and see what came about. And I'm kind of interested in this because it looks not much different than the tiny little lizards that um, are all over my rock wall in the backyard and um, in the front of my house in the front garden. I think they winter somewhere between my foundation and my siding. 
Um, but they're cute little guys and they don't cause any trouble, so I'm not worried about them. This is about, I don't know, they're about this long in real life. So this is definitely an oversized one, but I thought, okay, I guess I'm making a lizard now. Um, so I've got a lizard started as well. All the projects and all the, you know, things going on. And that's the thing about felting is that you can walk away from a project, whether it's a needle felted project or whether it's a wet felted project, you can run, you know, walk away from it every now and again and find a way back to it even years later after you've started it out. So, you know, just a few of the projects that I've been, uh, that are on my desk, on my work table currently, and we'll be finishing up here shortly. Um, I also have these hearts. And hearts are, are a special icon for me. Um, they always have been. And when I went to what turned out to be, whoops, I just dropped one. What turned out to be my last in-person felting workshop at the end of February, February 29th to be exact, um, I brought along 28 of these tiny little um, felted needle felted hearts and I brought 28 of them because February 29th of 2020 um, was would have been Randy's and my 28th wedding anniversary and we made it to 24 with each other almost made it to 25 um, and I wanted to do a little something for the folks who took my class that day and so I brought along 28 little needle felted hearts and asked each one of them if they'd like to take one home with them. So these are the leftovers from the 28 that I took. This is one that I was playing with the other day and added a little um, swirly design to it on the front. And this is another one that I put together and you see that I've um, worked some of the shadowed areas in here. And I think what this is going to turn out to be, I think I'm going to put them all together and create either a mobile or a wall hanging of some sort and just have the hearts right there. And because it's wool, <clears throat> it's, a, um, it's a mobile or a hanging that I can actually hang on my front porch. And as there's so much turmoil in the world and I want to do a better job of being an ally um, I, I want to put this out on my front porch to let everyone know that in my house, love rules. Hate does not rule. And so um, this is an ongoing project as well that I hope to finish up here very quickly. Um, but, you know, just a few little things that are um, working in my workroom. And I'm going to work this off the table here. I'm going to move this down. And I want to tell you and show you a little bit more about Uniquely Felt. I talked about this the other day when I did my little book report and my uh, new copy of Uniquely Felt came in and I wanted to show it to you. Um, this is what I consider to be the Bible for felting. <clears throat> Christine White goes through every type of felting you can imagine and there are, let me see if I'm reading this right, uh, 46 creative projects in here as well as tremendous instruction in felting of all sorts. Now, if you are a serious felter and you want to, you know, have a, a basic book that covers everything and gives you some ideas as to what you can create with felt, then this is an excellent resource book for you. If you want to learn about felting and you want to start from scratch, but you don't really um, do well learning from books or you'd like to have some more um, interpersonal um, communication, you wanna be part of a community, then I highly recommend, and it's not because I'm biased at all, I highly recommend that you head over to stabthingsintoexistence.com and you take a look at what the Felt It experience is all about because um, I, I am, I've been called a felting facilitator and I didn't give myself that name, but I can break down what seems like a very complex process into very easy to follow and easy to um, comprehend 
and understand ways of felting and whether that's needle felting or whether that's wet felting. Um, felting is, is my calling and teaching felting is really my passion at this point in time. And felting can be as simple as, you know, creating your favorite dog, you know, your, your beloved pet. It could be creating Nuna felt um, and incorporating fabric along with fiber. It could be turning your kids' design that they've drawn on paper into an actual physical representation, a sculpture that they can hang on to. But I'd like to think that I can help you with that. And the Felted Experience um, will be going live again this fall. But if you want to hear all the information about it and you want to look at what's part of that, then please go over to the website and take a look. Um, there's a monthly video tutorial that is available for members. There's a weekly Zoom call that members can talk to me about projects that they're working on and um, things that they've got questions about. And there's a private Facebook group where you can post pictures and you can ask questions and touch base with me and get some information or some resource links from me so that you can continue your felting journey. Um, so please take a look at that. I'm gonna flip the camera back up. And I just wanna say thank you all for coming alongside me in my journey with felting. Um, I love this medium and I'm gonna turn that light off because it's shining right in my eye. Um, I love this medium. In 10th grade, I took an art class and I distinctly and very viscerally remember the day when my art instructor um, said, no, you're not drawing right. Um, and that stifled me for a very long time. Um, I had always wanted to paint. Um, I thought watching my mother paint with oils when I was a kid um, was amazing and I always wanted to paint. But from the time that 10th grade art teacher said, slapped my hand, you know, with his words, he said, no, you're not doing it right. I sort of squashed all of that creativity down and it wasn't until I discovered felting, needle felting, in 2008, when I was 48 years old, that I found my medium for painting. And my medium for painting isn't charcoals or watercolors or um, oil paints, although I'm finding that I can do some of those things now, but my primary medium is working with fiber and taking bits of fiber like this luscious alpaca here. Um, I just packed some up to take to a friend today, but I can take fiber like this and I can pull off wisps of it and I can turn those wisps into a sculpture. I can turn those wisps into some designs back here. I can turn them into a painting, a felted painting here. I can turn them into flowers, into bowls into vessels, into a lovely fairy lamp. You can too, and I can show you how to do that. And I want to show you how to do that. Um, so before you um, get involved with the Felted Experience, there is a free group, uh, a free group on Facebook under Anna Walker Designs. It's called So You Bought a Felting Kit. So if you have felting supplies, if you have wool and needle felt uh, needles and a foam block or a sponge to felt upon, go over and ask to join So You Bought a Felting Kit because I'll throw in some ideas about once a week or so and you know give you some information and some resources that can help you continue your journey until you get the chance to sign up for the Felted Experience. Um, I hope you'll continue to join me in this journey because I want to help you discover your creativity that might have gotten squashed down like mine did. And I want to help you find a way to stab something into existence, to roll with the felt, and to find your creativity again. So until tomorrow, um, I'll talk to you later. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.